people fear, you know, the SAT or SACT math portions because they, they think you have to be very mathy, right? You have to love math and be very mathy to do well. Um, do you think that's the case? Or do you think actually that quite a lot of people could do very well on these tests with some, you know, right prep work? Um, I mean, a lot of my friends, and I, I'm not saying they, they weren't, they're, they're smart, but their strengths lot lay in other areas. But they didn't struggle with the ACT, like you may think, oh, everyone's going to have algebra two. So it's like I said, it's not like they're, they're asking you, you know, you're mathy people, I'm taking calculus in high school, but the calculus isn't helping you. That's not what this test is about. It's about how well you can apply the skills they know everyone taking it has. So I have friends who I'm not a math person, you know, and I'm not this and they're scoring in the thirties, no problem, because it's not about how much you love math or how much you know about math. It's how well you can work with a given tool set, right? That's, I think, what they try and focus on. And yes, if you're a math person, you've done more math, you're like, it will be easier. And if you like something, it's easier, yes. you know? But at the same time, I mean, I've known many, many people who would consider themselves, you know, who went went to school for comparative literature and stuff like that, who still scored in like the 30s on the ACT, because it's, it's not about how much you know in math, it's about how well you can apply critical thinking in a math setting. Um, and so I think that, yeah, Though I will say, if you're not a math person, this sounds weird, but I think that for most people, when they say not a math person, they actually have problems with computation often. It's that's the, the execution is often a problem for them. And so the SAT tends to be easier for those people because they get the, if, especially if they're like, I'm a smart person, but I'm not a math person. If you get the concepts well, but you have trouble with the operational performance and you're, you're bad with like a timetable. The ACT is very timetable focused, whereas the SAT gives you room to breathe. So I often recommend the SAT to not math people. So, um, but my little, my little uh, tutor. Got it, there. got it. Um, of course you can, and the, the benefit with these two tests now, which are so both you know, prevalent and common, you can really choose one that suits your strengths. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to ask to what extent you'd say maybe even to what extent, you know, if you're a mother right now of, you know, younger children, you know, not yet in a junior in high school, to what extent should you be thinking about the ACTs or SATs? Because some schools are moving away from them. Um, you know, I can we even predict whether these types of tests or different versions of these types of tests are going to be around 10 years from now? What, what are your thoughts? So that's a, it's been a big conversation mm -hmm. ever since I started working with the, I really started focusing on the ACT and SAT and about 2015. That was when I really switched to a heavy focus on that versus just like subject level help. Mm -hmm. um, and it's been a conversation like ever since I started doing it, which is, you know, oh, schools are going test optional, you know, it's going to be. And, and here's my, my uh, subjective opinion is that uh, as long as there is a measurement to be made, a standard that you can measure against, humans are going to measure people against it. No matter what, oh, he's super smart, he's whatever. What do, you, what do you get on the SAT? What do you get on the ACT? You know, <laughs> some people, people, as much as I, you know, I'm not a very competitive person myself. Honestly, I kind of, it, people in general always want to know. They want to know. They want to, even if it's how well did I stack up? How well did I, and colleges will always know that if people are going to be doing it, they'll be like, you could submit it. And there's, here's the deal. It is test optional. But if you score in the 30s, you want a college to know it. And the college kind of wants to know that. So test optional is saying it's not important to me. But I think in the back of almost all college recruiters' mind is why didn't they send their score? And I hate to say it that way, but it's true. We've heard that from, we've had these conversations. The center I work with, um, we talk with a lot of people involved in the admissions process. We get their opinions. And we've had more than one, more or less just straight out say, like, I do wonder why. You know, and it's not, not that they won't admit you. That's not, that's not all what they're saying. They, if they say test optional, they're serious. They'll take you in. Don't stress. But on a, on a personal level, they wonder. And we've always said that making a connection through your essay and through your application is one of the best ways to get in. So if you, you know, you want them to not wonder to a degree, you know, yes. you don't want any doubt. So it's something you can brag about, right? If you, if you have, have a great score, that's an extra plus. And, and especially and, for the highly competitive schools. I mean, that's the reality. It may be mm -hmm. optional many places, but, you know, highly competitive universities will continue to at least you know, want to see and that or care. Of course, uh, money runs the world and scholarships. Scholarships are often based on ACT, SAT score, academic 
scholarships for sure, but also athletic scholarships normally have partial requirements. I know that mm. something like uh, University of Auburn in Alabama have 29s. If you're if you're going for an uh, athletic scholarship and you score a 29, it turns into a full ride instead of partial wow. okay. for, for several of those local universities here in the South. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I know that that's a big deal. And athletes, you basically have to have like a 21, I believe it is for most of the schools around here to even receive, no matter mm -hmm. what, how great of an athlete you are, you have to clip into 21 for, I think, a full ride for like baseball, football, and the, a lot of the- Wow, wow. Well, yeah. Okay, so. so so clearly these requirements still remain, or there, there are certain baselines that you have to, thresholds you have to cross. So even let's say, you know, I, I would say, even if that, SATs or ACTs evolve in the future into something else, or we have another set of tests, most likely, again, these types of tests are going to be testing for critical thinking and reasoning skills, right? Yeah, um, because here's the deal. If you test on just a knowledge base, right? Like, do you know what three plus A is? Eventually, no matter what that knowledge is, someone's going to sit down, they're going to write a database, they're going to say, memorize this. And there's going to be a million people out there, literally millions, who can sit down and memorize that. Mm -hmm. And they're going to come in and they're going to slap down perfect answers. And then your, your differentiation curve looks like this. Well, I guess like some people miss it. And then the rest is just a flat line. And so you go to apply it. Wow, a 36. Wow, a 36. Wow, a 36. You know, and it's like, that didn't help us at all. So it's always going to be that critical thinking, that, that engaging the brain, right? And plus, what do you want in a college? What does a college want? A college wants someone who's going to be successful in the real world. They want someone who's going to carry their name, their legacy, their brand for years to come after they leave the college, not just get the degree. And how do you do that? You don't do it by knowing a couple of facts. Google knows everything. You do it by engaging with the world and being a critical thinker and making a big difference, right? And so that's, that's what colleges want. They want colleges, no matter what they say, not to go on the college admissions <laughs> ramp, but they want someone not just who's going to get the degree, but who's going to make a difference carrying their name. And so they, they're they always looking for those metrics. And the one of the most long-running indicators of that is critical thinking ability. Critical thinkers change the world, right? So, Absolutely. And what a perfect way to finish. Um, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Guide, guide Us. I greatly appreciate, and you guided us very well, <laughs> just to play with that. We almost made it the whole time without the fun, uh, but yes, yes. Uh. This was wonderful, very helpful. So, you know, again, to sum up the key takeaways, um, if you're a parent of younger children, take a look at what your children are learning in mathematics. Take a look if they're really learning critical thinking skills, if they are doing word problems. I mean, that's the quickest way to check. Is your, yeah. are, is your child doing word problems? Are these multi-step word problems? Are these the types of word problems where your child has to stop, think, assess, uh, types of problems where they maybe get a little frustrated? You know, they have to exercise their brain. If so, that means they are doing what it takes to start preparing, even in elementary school, for scoring well eventually on the ACTs and the SATs. Yep, I would agree. <laughs> Well, thank you so much. And then um, have a lovely rest of your day and maybe we'll chat next time. <laughs> thank you for having me again. It was thank wonderful. you. Thanks. Take care. Thank you for watching. If you're enjoying this, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss future videos.